Hello nomads and welcome to the next iteration of Eric's Anime Corner. As always, I am your host, Eric Hunt. Um, and today we got a great episode planned for you. Uh, I do, I don't know why I said we. Um, I'm talking about Pokemon. Uh, if you're watching the video version, you can see in the background, I got the original anime series uh, looping in the background, which is great. Just brings back so many memories and nostalgia. Um, but yeah, usually... Usually I have a shirt related to what I'm talking about, but surprisingly I don't own any Pokemon shirts. I feel like I should uh, rectify that a little bit, but if you're watching the video version, you can see I just got my Mario shirt on. I mean, it's Nintendo. It's in the, you know, same, uh, same area, so whatever. It's fine. But anyways, uh, I'm so glad that you're joining me for this one because I think this one is going to be a really fun one. Um, like I said... We are talking about Pokemon on this one. Um, and as always, we will start with the what. What is Pokemon? Um, unless you've been living under a rock type Pokemon for your entire life, um, I feel like most people have at least heard of Pokemon, even if they've never watched it or played the games or anything. Um, so. I will just give a quick introduction in case for some reason you're watching this and you have absolutely no idea what Pokemon even is. Um, so I know this is usually an anime show, but I feel like you can't talk about Pokemon without talking about the video games um, because the anime was based on the video games. The video games came first before anything in Pokemon, which is really interesting. I feel like you don't see that as often. Um, a anime being adapted from a video game which i thought this was really cool i have no idea if this is like the first example of that or you know i'm not really as familiar with any other animes that have been adapted from video games i feel like it's usually it starts out as a manga and that's what gets adapted but i always thought that was interesting that the video games came first um but let me get a slight history of pokemon out there for you if you don't know uh, it was created by Satoshi Tajiri, which I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, back in 1996 when the original games were released in Japan, Pocket Monsters Red and Green. Um, they were originally re released in Japan, and they didn't come to North America until 1998 with Pokemon Red and Blue. Um, between that time of the games coming out in 96 and them coming to America in 98, the anime was actually released in 1997. Um, and like, that's just kind of the, with the games and the anime, everything just kind of took off from that point. And to this day, it is the highest grossing media franchise in the world. Um, there's toys, movies, books, manga, music they had they had a temporary theme park put up um and of course you can't forget the pokemon trading card game which is still a craze today um it's it's insane uh but again if you don't know the story of pokemon just a super general overview of the world um basically in pokemon humans known as pokemon trainers catch and train pokemon to battle other Pokemon for sport. And that is like the highest level of high levels you can get on Pokemon. Uh, obviously there is, you know, tons of other nuances. There's tons of series, different series, anime series, movies, all that stuff. Um, and the original games and the anime follow a 10 year old boy named Ash, Ash, <laughs> Ash Ketchum, Ash Ketchum on a, who is on a journey to become a Pokemon master. He, he wants to catch them all. Um, and he has been on his journey for, uh, what, 20 plus years. It's, it's pretty insane how long and how much of a craze that Pokemon is. And it's still, still going on today. Um, so it's, it's really, really insane. Uh, but with that, we will move on to the second part of our, uh, rundown here of Pokemon. The why. The why covers why I love Pokemon as a series and as a video game. Um, I was introduced to Pokemon at a very young age, uh, six years old, I believe. And that this memory is like 
super vivid in my mind. Um, on my brother's 10th birthday, he got Pokemon Blue for the Game Boy, and I know that I was jealous. So my dad, smartly, he saw that there were two games. So he got Pokemon Blue for my brother, and at the same time, he gave it to me because I knew it. He knew I would be jealous. He got me Pokemon Red, um, which is is really awesome, because that way, you know, my brother and I could trade each other, battle each other with the link cables. We did we did all of that stuff, and Pokemon Red was kind of the the uh, genesis of how I fell in love with the series and the franchise as a whole, and also. also Pokemon Red with Charizard on the cover and everything like that really fueled my love for Firestarters as well. So that's that's where that came from. I mean, since I've been playing Pokemon games at that young age, I always, always, always choose the Firestarter. Unless, you know, I've, I mean, I've replayed the, the original game so many times, I obviously change it up sometimes. But 99% of the time, I will choose a Firestarter in Charmander or, you know, Gen 2 with Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil is my my probably my favorite starter, um, mostly because Gen 2 is my uh, favorite generation of Pokemon. And with Gen 2, that's really when I started to get heavily into it. Because um, at that point, like, my cousins, we all had Game Boys and we were all trading with each other, battling with each other. We would just go to our grandma's house on Sundays and all be playing Pokemon on our Game Boys together, giving each other hints and tips and all that stuff, you know, where to get rare candies to level up your Pokemon to level 100. Um, but yeah, we were we were deep into Pokemon at that point. Um, and my love for the games kind of fueled my love for the anime as well. Um, I have fond memories of watching the anime like every day before school with my brother. Um, just following Ash's journey was super fun. It, it kind of brought the games to life in a, in a really cool way. Um, cause I mean the, the first couple games, uh, with, um, red and blue and silver and gold, uh, they followed Ash's journey and that's kind of the same thing that happened with the anime and Ash is still the main character of the anime today. Um, but yeah, just meeting Brock and Misty and all of these characters along the way, there's just so many, so many, so many great moments, uh, that I'm super nostalgic about. Um, and of course I, I feel like I also can't not mention the trading card game as well because that again that was huge when i was a kid in whatever 1999 2000 when i first started getting into pokemon and it's still huge today um these pokemon cards are going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars um on ebay and on the secondary market and everything it's it's really crazy um sadly i I, I mean, I had one of those Pokemon binders that I feel like a lot of people had um, where, you know, you got the pages and you can slot your cards in and everything. I wish I, I wish I still had that, but I remember selling all of my Pokemon cards, all of I, I just remember one day, this is when I started getting more into video games and I didn't care about, you know, trading card games as much. I, they were just kind of sitting in a drawer, not doing anything with them. And as a dumb kid, I'm like, Hey, why don't I sell these cards to a card shop um, and, you know, get some money to buy some new video games. So it's exactly what I did. And I, I remember not getting a ton of money for them because, you know, at that point they weren't really rare. They were still popular at that time. So, but I can't imagine what my collection would have been worth today if I had kept those all this time. Um, yeah, I feel like recently with the games, I've felt fallen off a little bit, but with like Pokemon X and Y, I really loved Let's Go Eevee. I thought was a great remake of the original games as well. I really love that. And recently, Pokemon uh, Arceus or Arceus, I think it's Arceus. I don't know exactly how you say that. Um, it really makes me excited for the future of the franchise. Uh, and then we just got the announcement of Scarlet and Violet. Um, which it seems like they're sticking with that open world formula for the core game. So I am really, really excited about that. And I'm excited that they're finally changing up the formula, uh, of Pokemon a little bit, just to get people like me who are nostalgic for the original series, um, back into it. So I think that is really, really cool. And I'm really excited for the future of Pokemon. Um, and that is... That kind of wraps up the why section of why I love it. So we will quickly move on to the last section, 
who is it for? Um, who would I recommend this to if, you know, say you've heard of Pokemon, you've never really checked it out, you never checked out the games. It's, it's kind of hard to recommend um, because everybody knows what Pokemon is already. And if you know what it is and you've never checked it out, then it's kind of like, it's a, it's a hard pitch to make. Um, especially if you are an adult now and you don't have any sort of nostalgia about it from, you know, being a kid and, and everything. But I will say like, it's, it's, I mean, even now it's super popular with the kids. So as a parent, I think it would be really, really fun to get my kid, my son, introduce him to Pokemon. It, it would just be a great kind of father and son activity. So I would recommend anybody, anybody with kids who has a slight interest in Pokemon. And also this is a great way to introduce them into like a JRPG because it super simple mechanics. Um, they're very, very accessible games and you can kind of play them together, you know, show them these different mechanics and obviously I feel like the kids love all the uh, the new Pokemon designs and everything. Like it's it's great, great for kids, and it's great for <laughs> adults who have nostalgia for that. Um, but I can definitely see how it would be tough for you know, say an adult who grew up after Pokemon or was already kind of older after Pokemon, the Pokemon craze began. Um, it would be hard for them to get into it just because it does you know skew more towards kids and that that type of audience but i feel like i was the perfect perfect age when pokemon kind of got big because i you know i was a kid when i got into it and i still still love it to this day still play the game still watch the anime so it's just uh it's just fantastic um and i think that will about wrap it up for this month's episode of eric's anime corner like i said it was a fun one i will always, always, always be stoked to talk about Pokemon. Um, I love it so much. I love the games. I love the anime. I love anything, anything related to Pokemon. Um, so yeah, this was a really fun one. Uh, so just some housekeeping of things that are coming up next for the Nomads of Fantasy. We had actually had just released our uh, review of the first season of The Legend of Vox Machina, which is Critical Role's new series on Amazon Prime Video. So um, if you've never heard of it, uh, Critical Role is a D&D &D group, um, and they kind of made their own uh, sh animated show based on a part of their first campaign. Um, and it was really, really fun. I would highly recommend checking it out, even if you're not into D&D &D at all. I think you can still really enjoy it. Um, and what's coming up next for us, uh, we are going to be releasing an episode later this week on the Western movie Unforgiven. Uh, it's a Clint Eastwood joint released in 1992, and it was a Best Picture winner that year. And I watched it last night, and I, I would highly recommend it. I was really, really uh, blown away by it. I, I can't wait to, to talk about it on the podcast, and I hope you check that out. Um, again, this, is, this will have a video version and a podcast version. I will put the link to the video version in the podcast version, and vice versa. Um, so I hope you check out both of those. And... Um, if you want to share your memories with me of Pokemon, how you got into it, how you're introduced to it, you know, what, uh, why you still love it today, I would absolutely love to hear those. So if you're watching the video version, I would love if you left a comment. Um, and if you're listening to the podcast version, you could get at us on Twitter at Nomads of Fantasy or email us Nomads of Fantasy at gmail.com. Um, for all that good stuff. Uh, and please, if you enjoyed this as well, listening to the podcast version, I would absolutely love it if you left us a review um, or give us a, give me suggestions of what to watch next for Eric's Anime Corner. I have some ideas of what I want to do next month, but I am always open to suggestions. So please send those my way. Um, and with that, as always, safe travels, nomads.